So uh, let us continue the discussion on time of supply. In the last class we have covered this section. We have covered sections 12 and 13 of the CGST Act. And in today's lecture we will wind up the topic of time of supply by covering the section 14 because entire topic of time of supply is in three sections 12, 13 and 14. 12 and 13 we have already covered and now let us complete section 14. So let us do the, 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 the discussion on section 14 of the CGST Act. Now, what is section 14 all about? This is applicable whenever there is a change in date of tax. Whenever there is a change in rate of tax, then I have to apply 14. I cannot apply section 12 and 13. I cannot apply that. Whenever there is a change in rate of tax, I have to apply section 14. Now, how can I say that there is a change in rate of tax? Always the tax rates keep on changing. So can I say that always I need to apply section 14? Answer is no. If the thing has gone, if the situations have passed, if everything has been done today and tomorrow if tax rates are changed, then I'm not concerned about future. Similarly, when everything is being done today and tax rates were changed six months ago, then I'm not concerned about those tax rates which were there six months ago. So technically the point to be discussed here is when will you say that effectively there is a change in rate of tax for the purpose of section 14. So for this you have to learn three different dates. You are concerned with three different dates. Date one. <coughs> Date one, date of supply, when supply has happened. This is date one, date two, date of issue of invoice, when invoice has been issued, invoice or tax invoice, one of the same thing. Date three. Date of receipt of payment. Now three different dates you need to check. When you did the supply, when you issued the invoice and when you made the payment. If all these three are on the same day, then there is no problem. If all the things are happening on 9th April, today I, I made a supply, today I issued the invoice, and today the customer has given me the payment. Then why will I apply section 14? That is not relevant. Because everything is happening on the same day. So today whatever is the rate, that will become applicable. So I'm not going to apply a section 14 then. Then I will apply section 12 or 13 as the case may be. I will check section 12 or 13. Because everything is happening today. But if these are different, if something is happening on 9th April, another thing is happening on 19th April, third thing is happening on 29th April, for example, if something is happening on 9th, 19th, 29th. Now, if these are different, then I will not apply section 12 and 13. Then 
I need to check whether I can apply section 14 or not. Now, if supply is happening here, sorry, if change in tax rate is happening here, change is happening in between. Then I will say that my situation is one where I will apply section 14. If goods are supplied before the change in rate of tax, sorry, not goods, if goods or services or both are supplied before the change in rate of tax. And situation two, and goods or services or work are supplied after the change in rate of tax. These two situations are included in section 14, that's it. Now in my example, if I'm saying that change is happening here during this date, that means after 9th, after supply, but before any other event. Now in this case, I will apply situation 1 because supply is happening before change in rate of tax. This is my situation. If supply is happening before change in rate of tax, what question which can arise is, suppose I was supplying laptop and it was having 5-18% rate and when change happened on, for example, 15th April, for example, on 15th April, the tax rate on laptop is revised from 18 to 28%. So technically the issue has arisen. At how much rate you should pay tax to the government of India? 18 or 28? It's not an easy question to answer. So what you must remember in section 14 that when this 14 is applicable, whenever there is a change in rate of tax, this is one thing. Second, you need to be concerned about three different dates. You have to check three different dates. What is the date of supply? What is the date of issue of tax invoice? And what is the date of receipt of payment? This is second thing. Now, third, so how will you proceed? First, you will check when section 14 is applicable. When it is applicable, whenever there is a change. So check the date of change. Change date you should check. But change can happen any any time. So I'm not concerned about only the date of change. My second stage will be check three other dates also. Not only change date, check three other dates also. And which are those dates? Date of supply, date of issue of invoice, tax invoice, and date of receipt of payment. This is my second stage. Now, if this has also happened, then third stage is what? Then out of these three dates, supply, invoice, receipt of wherever, two events fold that will be the rate which is applicable like in my example out of these supply invoice and receipt after change two events fold invoice is issued after change payment is made received after change so majority is after so in this i have to apply new rate in this case so new rate will be applicable at the rate of 28 percent Though goods were sold before change in rate of tax, but still you have to pay new rate because other two are in majority. Similarly, if I say that the change is happening here, if I say that change is happening here, so where the now the majority falls, supply is happening before, invoice is before, so majority is before, then in this case, I will apply old rate. 
18 percent. This is what the problem is. That's it. This is what entire section 14 is. Three different dates are necessary. Supply, maximize, payment. These are necessary to make a decision. Change date, of course, it is also required, but only to check something. When these three supply invoice were received, out of these three, any two falls after the change in rate of tax. The new rate is applicable after the rate. If any of these two out of these three falls before the change in rate of tax, then old rate is applicable. That means old rate. Other than these situations, now if change is happening, then it is of no use. That I will show it to you later. But for the time being, four dates are relevant. First date is only to check something, change in rate of tax. Other three are relevant to make a decision, supply date, invoice date, payment date. And one concept is over now. How will you check the rate, which rate is applicable? Whenever out of these three, any two events happen. Whenever out of these three, any two events happen. Supply, invoice, or payment out of these three, wherever any wherever majority force, any two events happen. If these are happening after the change in rate of tax, which is there in blue color on the screen, then you apply new rate. And if any two is happening before the change in rate of tax, which is in green color here, then you apply the old rate. So my first stage discussion is over. So what is my first stage discussion? What decision I am making? If two events out of three For after the change, after the rate change period, then you apply new rate. And if they fall before the rate change period, Then you apply the old rate. This is one thing. If till this point it is clear, it is clear. If till this point the discussion is clear, please raise your hand. But the question is not over yet. I knew which rate, but I haven't told you which date, on which date you have to pay the tax. So what I have told you is just the rate. By having this discussion, you are only aware about one concept that which rate. But now can you tell me which date? Date concept is still unclear. Have you understood my question which I am raising? Please raise your hand if you have understood the question which I am raising. That by having this much discussion, still you are unclear about on which date you pay the tax. Rate is clear, but which date? So for date, we have to learn some tables. You cannot tell the date right now. We do another discussion. Date is impossible to tell. By having this discussion, the rate is easy to tell, but not the date. Now for date, what you need to check? So there are two situations. When goods or services are, are supplied before the change in rate of tax or after the change in rate of tax. And I, I told you that there are three different dates which are relevant only. Date of issue of tax invoice, date of payment, that's it. Because supply date is available here. So now for this you need to learn the table. Date of issue of invoice, tax invoice.
डेट ऑफ रिसीट ऑफ पेमेंट टाइम ऑफ सप्लाई Now see what things can happen. Goods are supplied before. Goods are supplied before. So let me assume an example. Suppose goods supply date is. Uh, suppose goods supply date is 16 July. Goods supply date 16 July. It's a common example. Change in rate. Twentieth July, so I can say that my situation one is fulfilled, or criteria of situation one is fulfilled. That goods are supplied before change in date of tax. Uh, please wait for two minutes. Now, come back. So my situation one criteria is over. Yes, goods are supplied before change in date of tax. Now, what about two other dates? What is the date of issue of invoice? Suppose both these dates are also before. Invoice is also issued before change in date of tax. Receipt of payment is also being done before change in date of tax. So what is the time of supply? Section fourteen is not at all applicable. Why, why, why will I go for time of supply then? Because invoice date is before 20 July, payment date is before 20 July, put supply before 20 July. So everything is complete before 20 July. So date of change, uh, this section 14 is not at all applicable. It's not that whenever date of change happens, always you should apply section 14. You have to learn when you will apply. If goods are supplied before change in date of tax, invoice is issued before change in date of tax, payment is made before change in date of tax, then why will you apply section 14? Not applicable because all the things are over before change in date of tax. Then time of supply is determined as per section 12 or 13 as the case may be. Then you have to apply 12 or 13, not 14. So for every change in date of tax, by default, don't apply 14. Read the concept. I hope the concept is clear. Because if today everything is happening, and after one year the rate, tax rate will change. I'm not concerned after one year tax rate change. Today everything has happened. Today you have went to any shop and purchased product, made the payment, received the goods. Tomorrow if tax rate change happens, neither you are concerned with this tomorrow's rate, nor the supplier is concerned. That is why I am saying that in my first point, don't apply section 14. You cannot apply it. Logically, you should not apply it. It's not allowed. You apply 12 or 13 as the case may be. But if so, technically, now first point is invoice is after, receipt is after, because I have told you to tell you the date. Two events must be in a different time period. If all the three are either before or after, section 14 doesn't arise then. Out of these three, any one should be before, remaining should be after. So this is how you determine the conceptual clarity of section 14. So when goods and services are supplied before change in rate of tax, and in invoice date and payment date is after, so which rate? Can you tell me which rate is applicable now? Now what is happening is this is after. Let us assume it is 21st July. This is also after. Let us assume it is 22nd July. Now you can say there is a problem. Supplied on 16th. Change happens 20th. Invoice and payment 
21st and 22 respectively which rate is applicable new rate because where majority lies so majority lies in after supply date invoice date payment date majority lies after so after means new rate but which date even if new rate but i don't know whether 21st july or 22nd july answer is earlier one so earlier of earlier of date of issue of tax invoice date of receipt of payment which i was so earlier i already have written earlier this is my first one second situation invoice is issued before for example 17th july when I'm saying before, I'm making the change comparison with change in rate of tax rate. Payment date is after. For example, 22nd July. Can I apply section 14? Yes, I have to apply. Because out of these three, something is before and something is after. When all the three are after, don't apply 14. When all the three are before, don't apply 14. That's it. Now, where majority falls? before supply is also before invoice is also before so which rate old rate but which date which date now date can either be issue date or invoice date now if it is before then I, I cannot write the date of receipt of payment because that is after if the rate is before before will only arrive at when I will write date of issue of invoice so invoice issue date is the answer I hope the concept is clear. You are not supposed to learn anything. Simply, if you know which rate, then it will help you in telling you which date. So when I knew in second point that before means old rate is applicable, out of these two dates, out of these two dates, old rate will come only when I will write date of issue of tax Third point. Now this is happening after. That means, for example, 21st July. And this is happening before. For example, 17th July. Here also, majority is with before. Before supplied, before received. So, which rate? Old rate. But which date? Here also, I cannot write issue of invoice because it will give you the answer of after. So, I have to write before, which means date of. Receipt of payment is the answer. I hope the point is clear. Please raise your hand if you have understood my situation one. Situation one is. Next point. So situation one was with was the situation where goods are supplied before the change in date of tax. You are concerned with date of issue of invoice or date of receipt of payment. On this basis, we determine the time of supply. Decision is based on where the two events lies out of those three. If that those two events lie in the after change period, then new rate, before change period, old rate. On this basis, I can check the date also. Now, if goods and services were supplied before, and if I have assumed all other two events are also before, then you cannot apply section 14 because to apply section 14 out of these three, all the three cannot be at the same period before or after there has to be some conflict or you can say opposite 
If two are before, one should be after. If one is before, two should be after. This is how you can apply section 14. Now situation two. Same table. Now here, for example, goods are supplied on 20th July, or for example, 20th, 27th August, and change in rate of tax. Goods are supplied on 27th August and change in rate of tax 23rd August. So goods are supplied after the change in rate of tax. 23rd comes before 27th later on. Now other two are up also after. <coughs> Invoices also issued after the change. For example, 24th July. Receipt of payment is after the change. For example, 24th July. Can you apply section 24? Answer is no. Because I told sorry. Can you apply section 14? Answer is no. Because I told you that out of these three, if all these three are at the same period, you cannot use section 14 because there is no need to use section 14 then. If everything is after, then of course you will apply new rate. So section 14 is not applicable. You have to take a decision on the basis of section 12 and 13 as the case may be. Now first, technical point. Let me assume both the things before. For example, 21st August, before the change in rate of tax, invoice is issued. Payment is also received before 21st, before 23rd August, for example, 20th August. Now if majority lies in before, Two things are before, so I will apply which rate? Old rate. But what is the date? 21st or 20th? Simple, earlier of. Date of invoice. I know this point is clear. Thank you. Now let me assume one thing before the change in rate of tax. Let me assume 21st August and one thing after the change in rate of tax. Let me assume 24th. Here I should not use July, it is August. Because now I am assuming everything in August. Now two things are after receipt as well as good supply. So which rate? After means new rate. But which date? Which date? You cannot write date of issue of invoice because that will give you before. New rate will come only when you write date of receipt of payment. So the answer is the date of receipt of payment. Third point. Now let me assume this as after. The change in rate of tax, for example, 24th August. And this is before. For example, 21st August. Now, which rate? Now, majority lies in after. Good supplied after. Issue after. After means new rate. 
which date date should either be invoice or receipt this is show so i cannot write receipt date because it is before i have to write after issue of invoice date date of issue of tax invoice that's it this is what the concept of section 14 is it tells you which date and on which date whenever change happens and if that change is covered under section 14 to be covered under section 14 then out of those three different events two should be in one period one should be in one period only then you can apply section 14 and this is how you can conclude the answer please raise your hand if section 14 is clear yes okay next point then there are some notes which needs to be explained to you some points to be noted note one how to determine the date of the receipt of payment how do you determine the date of receipt of payment it is very simple as we have already covered in section 12 and 13 also as as far as i am a supplier so i will supply the goods or services and i will receive the payment so how can you say that when i have received the payment so it is earlier of what date on which payment of entry is made in my books of account or date on which the amount is credited in my books of account so this is same concept we were using this in section 12 and 13 also amount is credited in my books of account sorry in my bank account. earliest one for me is the date of receipt of payment as per the rules but we have an exception and this exception is only in section 14 it was not there in 12 and 13 the exception is if the payment is credited in my bank this expression uh, uh, exception do remember it was not there in section 12 and 13 it is there only in section 14 if the payment is credited in my bank account Four days after, four days after the change in date of tax. Then the date of receipt of payment will not be the earliest one. then it will be only this date when it is actually credited this is the new point then the date of receipt of payment is the date on which the amount is credited in supplier's bank this is the new point if the payment is credited in my bank account 4 days after the change in rate of tax then the date of receipt of payment is not the earliest one but will be the actual date when it is credited for example let me tell you I'll give you an example and you should tell me the answer change in rate of tax happen change in rate of tax happens on 10 july for example on 10 july rate change happens. supplier made the entry of payment so many times advance is also received so payment of entry is made 
in books of account of this supplier. On 8th July. Amount is credited in the bank. Bank account of the supplier. On 14th July. I am asking you the question. Can you tell me the date of receipt of payment? That's it. Kindly tell me the date of receipt of payment in this example. Concept is also written above. You have to tell me the date of receipt of payment. What is the answer? So I'm asking for the answer, which is to be written in this box. The rate change happens on 10 July. Payment of entry is made in the books of account on 8 July. Amount is credited in bank on 14 July. What should be the date of receipt of payment? What should be the date of receipt of payment? What is the answer? What is the answer? Fourteen July. Fourteen July, why? Sir, four days after the change of date. No, but it is not four days after the change. How can you say it is four days after? Sir, 10 July was a change in rate of tax. So. No, no, no. I have already told you that you, in the law, when you say from, if the payment is credited in my bank account, four days after, the date of after the change in rate of tax. So technically your four days will start not from 10, but from 11. So this word after is not after basically. You should write it as from. Okay, not after. Take it as from. If four days from the date, from the change in rate of tax. So when it is written from, I never include that day. This already we know as per the general clauses that. So from means ignoring 10, I will count 11, 12, 13 and 14. So it was credited as per this on fourth day, not after fourth day. So it is if the payment is credited in the bank account, so language make some correction in the language after four days from the date. So I have written in short form, otherwise this is exact is if the payment is credited in the bank account after four days from the date of change in date of tax. Yeah, now it is complete line. And in this I will say that no, it is on the fourth day. So I will not apply this exception. My answer will depend upon this point. Earliest of payment of entry in the books of account, which is 8th, and date on which amount is credited, which is 14th, so which is earliest one, 8th July. I hope the concept is clear. If not, you can ask me. Otherwise, I am assuming that the concept is clear. Now, if I make a change that rather than 14th July, everything is same, but it is 15th July, then what is the answer? Then what will be the answer if it is 15 July? What is the answer then? 15 July. Yes, 15 July. Because now it is after four days, so then I'm not concerned with date of payment of entry. My answer depends upon this point. I hope this 15 July answer is clear. If yes, please raise your hand. Okay, now last point and technical, interesting as well as technical. Second note, if you remember that notification, I don't know whether you remember that notification or not. 
date of receipt of payment is not relevant date of receipt of payment is not relevant in case of supply of goods not services in case of i have discussed this in section 12 to us same case if you remember i think you will remember when i will start writing it completely date of receipt of payment is not relevant in case of supply of goods where supplier is liable to pay the tax and and the supplier has not opted to pay tax under the composition levy scheme i hope you remember because in case of supply goods can be supplied as well as services but ignoring services in case of goods this was section 12 i am discussing 12 to right now in 12 to a supplier should be that who is liable to pay the tax and he can opt for composition levy or he has not opted for composition levy in case he has not opted for composition levy his time of invoice is the is the date of issue of invoice or the last date by which he is required to issue the invoice becomes the time of supply in this case date of receipt of payment is irrelevant i hope you remember now it is irrelevant let me show those earlier slides where i have written those In this point, I hope you remember this slide. When I was discussing initially section 12, subsection 2, a supplier who is liable to pay the tax and no opting here, his time of supply depends only on date of issue of invoice to the last date as per section 31. Date of receipt of payment is not relevant here because of one notification number. I showed you that original notification also. Notification number 66 of 2017, which says that in case a supplier who is liable to pay the tax and not opting to pay tax under the composition levy scheme, date of receipt of payment does not matter. Do you remember this or not? Please raise your hand. So the same concept is applicable here also. 
the same concept is applicable here also and the concept is date of receipt of payment is not relevant the same notification number same notification number 16 sorry 66 of 2017 covers two sections it is applicable for section 12 sub section 2 also and it is applicable for this section 14 also that payment date is not relevant in case of supply of goods where supplier is liable to pay the tax and if that person has not opted to pay tax under the composition levy scheme so that is applicable for section section 14 also so what will be the effect of this notification it will be having serious effects what let me show you that what is the effect of this notification the first effect is that see this what change it will be So what change it will be having? First change is when goods or services are supplied before the change in rate of tax. First change is when goods and services are supplied before the change in rate of tax. If services are supplied, there is no issue because that notification is applicable only when goods are supplied. Within goods, when supplier is liable to pay the tax. Within this case, when the supplier has not opted to pay tax under composition levy scheme. so technically date of receipt of payment is applicable in every case except one exceptional case and that exceptional case is when goods are supplied by a supplier who is not uh, opting for composition levy scheme now what will be the effect that notification is applicable in section 14 also and the effect will be when we will determine time of supply in this case answer is earlier of issue of tax amount or payment which are earlier but i will not apply this payment date if goods are supplied by this supplier not opting for composition like this answer technically will be dependent totally on tax invoice date i don't know whether you are understanding this point or not it is little bit technical conceptually originally in the act section 14 says this is the answer but when you read the notification it says that no date of receipt of payment will be will not be applicable in case it is a supply of goods supplier is liable to pay the tax and not opting for composition levy scheme same case here also in the third situation answer is only date of receipt of payment it will not be the answer as per that notification if you are supplying goods where supplier is liable to pay the tax and the person has not opted for composition levy scheme so answer time of supply will not be date of receiving payment time of supply it is not date of receipt of payment by default the answer will become date of issue of invoice because only two things can be the answer as per this section 14 either payment date or tax invoice date so if by default receiving date of receiving payment cannot be the answer because of notification so answer will be date of issue of tax invoice it is very technical in my view i don't know whether you will be able to understand it at once or not you have to read it yourself same is the case here date of receipt of payment cannot be the answer in case supply of goods is happening where supplier is liable to pay the tax and not opting for composition levy scheme my entire decision will be based on date of issue of payment similarly in second stage date of receiving payment cannot be the answer because of this notification if it cannot be the answer answer will by default be date of issue of tax invoice but this will not be the answer not in every case only in exceptional case when goods are supplied 
where supplier is liable to pay the tax and where that person has opted not to pay the tax under composition levy scheme. That's it. This was my second point, technical, and I expect you to first read and then get back to me. It requires self-study to understand what is the exact issue. I simply wanted to give you an idea, but your own learning will only help you in asking the correct question. Right now, it's possible that you might not have understood this point. You might not have understood this point, but you will get to know only, only those can understand it, those who will read the concept in detail that notification number 66 with this i think that's sufficient for today and tomorrow we will start next topic value of supply goodbye till then